Hey, it's Mr. Robs here, and we are doing steady state matrices today. And so, and these are all results of Markov chains, where it's a system of repeated processes coming up with a steady state at the end. And so, a football club's fitness coach has observed the following trend. So, we have kids, players who are fit to play and players who are injured this week, and then their probability for next week based upon their state. And I know that 87% of the players are fit to play while the remainder remain injured. So that means 13% of them are injured. It says, first of all, write S sub 0, initial state vector. Well, my initial is going to be 0.87, injured or healthy, and fit to play, and 13, which are injured. And note, this time, my initial state probability, or my initial probability state matrix, the same idea as the initial state matrix, except now these are probabilities. Everything else is going to be the same. So I also want to write down T. So T is simply 0 0.88, 0 0.12 going down the column. At the top of the next column, 0 0.32 and 0 0.68 is T. Okay, and then it says state the meaning of the number in the column 2, row 1. Well, column two, row one is this value right here. Ro columns and rows. So call that one there. So it means if you are injured this week, 32% of those injured players, of all the injured players, are fit to play in the upcoming week. That's what this cell here means. Okay. So moving on then to the C part. It says find algebraically the steady state system S I'm looking for. The steady state probability vector is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for S. And this is method two. Okay, there's two different ways to do it. Method one, if you recall from the previous video, method one was when you found S, which was equal to T to the N times the initial value when N got really large, and that found us S. But this time, that uses the power of the calculator, but this time we have to do it algebraically. And so what we have to recognize. So what a steady state probability vector means, or just a steady state of the system, of this Markov chain system, I know that eventually Sn plus 1 is equal to Sn. They end up being the same. And so what I also know is that if to get Sn plus 1, Sn plus 1 is equal to T times Sn. Well, these values are the same, and we'll call this S. And so S is equal to T times S. And so what this is saying is if I, I take my transformation matrix, transition matrix T, multiply it by S, I get the same value S at the end. And so that's kind of a unique scenario. But it's pretty powerful, and it's the basis of our second method, of method number two. So if I take my transition matrix, 8, 8, 0 0.88, and 0, 1, 2, 0, 3, 2, and 0, 6, 8, and I multiply it by S, I don't know what S is, so let's call S A, B. So if I multiply T times S, I have to get S back again. And so now when I actually do the multiplication, I get 0.88a plus 0.32b is equal to a. And if I simplify that, bring my a over, I get negative 0.12a plus 0.32b is equal to 0. When I do the bottom row in this column, I get 0.12a plus 0.68b from those two is equal to b. Again, doing my algebra, I get 0.12a, subtract the b over, and that's minus 0.32b is equal to 0. Great. I have two equations, two unknowns, and I just can eliminate them. But what do you recognize? This equation is identical to this one. So my, I actually only have one equation, two variables. I need another one. What I do know 
is that this vector is a probability vector. So I know the sum of this has to be 1. So a plus b equals 1. And for this particular example, we were doing a probability vector. But if I was told that these were had a sum, the total had, were 120 vapors, perhaps, let's say. So then I know that they would add up to 120, and I can get a and b in that perspective as well. But now it's just a matter of solving this system of equations here. And if I go to my calculator, if I go to my calculator, I go to polysimultaneous, and you can see I've already put the values into my calculator. And if I hit solve, I get 8 11s and 3 11s. So A is equal to 8 over 11, and B is equal to 3 over 11. And this is our steady state probability matrix S. D now, the club's got 42 members. In the long term, how many would you expect to be injured? Well, if I, so if I take my injured people, so this is the D part, if I take my injured proportion, which is this, and I multiply it by 42, that will be what I expect to get injured. And when I do it, I end up with 11.45 injured people. So that really means I'm going to have 11 people injured. In the long term, that's how many people I would expect in my 42-member club long term to be injured. Now, E part says Oscar has started a new club and uses this data to look at injuries and fitness. Based upon this data, what's the minimum number of players Oscar should recruit to field a team of 11? Well, if I want to have a field of 11, I need 8 out of 11 players who are fit. I'm going to multiply it by P. I don't know what P is, but when I'm done, I need to have 11 players. And so then I solve for P. I get P is equal to 121 over 8 by multiplying by 11, divided by 8. And this is 15.125. That means, therefore, Oscar needs 16 players to ensure he's got a full team. So he should recruit 16 players in total. So ultimately now we have two methods in order to find our steady state matrix. We have algebraically using this idea here, and we have our calculator way which uses this idea here and making t very large.